Hi friends. In the previous videos, we were discussing about the abnormalities of puparium. Here we are going to see one more abnormality that is retained placenta. In the normal case, after the delivery, within 30 minutes, the placenta is supposed to get expelled. That is, the placenta is supposed to get separated and it will come out of the uterus. But here in this case, the placenta will remain inside the uterus even after 30 minutes. So retained placenta means the placenta is set to retain when it is not expelled out even 30 minutes after the birth of the baby. Even after the birth of the baby, that the placenta will not come out after 30 minutes also. That is known as the retained placenta. Let us see the causes of retention of placenta. In some cases, the placenta may be separated from the uterus, but after the separation, it will remain inside the uterus itself. That is due to the poor uterine contractions. If the uterine contractions are weak or inefficient, even after the separation of the placenta, the placenta will remain inside the uterus itself. That is one reason. And the reason, the main thing already I have told you that may be due to the weak uterine contractions. This weak uterine contractions you can see in the case of multiple pregnancy, you can see in the case of grand multiparous woman, or you can see in the case of prolonged labor and in the case of advanced stage of the mother. In all these cases, the uterine muscles will become weak and these muscles won't be having the capacity to produce an effective uterine contraction to expel the placenta out. So the placenta will remain inside the uterus itself. Sometimes it may get separated but the uterus may not be having the capacity to expel it out and it may remain. Sometimes it may not even get separated or sometimes it may be partially separated or uh, fully not separated. Another, another one is morbid adherent placenta. That is in spite of good uterine contractions, good uterine contractions will be there but the placenta will be attached to the uterine endometrium that is known as the morbid adherent placenta. It may occur partially or completely. Sometimes full placenta may be attached to the uterus or sometimes only a partial or half or a portion of the placenta may be attached to the uterus. And sometimes due to the presence of constriction ring or sometimes if a nurse or a fedor is trying to expel the placenta or deliver the placenta before the separation of the placenta in these cases sometimes a portion of placenta may remain inside the uterus that is for example if you are trying to remove the placenta and assume that the placenta is not separated and when you are trying to remove sometimes only a portion of the placenta may get separated and it may come out of the uterus and the remaining portion may remain inside or balanced portion may remain inside the uterus itself okay these are the causes of the retained placenta how to diagnose the adherence, adherent placenta or retained placenta means usually we know that within 30 minutes after delivery the placental expulsion or delivery of the placenta will occur. Here you just watch for 30 minutes and even after 30 minutes also it's not occurring that's a complete diagnosis and you should observe for the signs of placental separation during this 30 minutes. The signs of placental separation include lengthening of the cord lengthening of the umbilical cord which is visible outside and sudden gush of blood you can see the sudden uh, escape of blood through the uh, vagina it may be due to the separation of the placenta and if you are observing the lower sec segment of the uterus especially the suprapubic region you can see the suprapubic bulging that is if the placenta is in the upper segment of the uterus once if it has got separated, it will fall to the lower segment of the uterus and when it is occupying space inside the lower segment of the uterus, that you can feel as a bulging at the suprapubic region. So you just observe for these signs of separation of placenta and if it is there, it's a positive thing. And the hourglass construction, that is formation of constriction ring, uh, adhered placenta, all those things you can be diagnosed only when you are trying for the manual removal of the placenta. Next, we can see the management. First, you should wait and watch for the normal separation of the placenta. That is during the half an hour period, you have to watch patiently and you should not take uh, any uh, measure or any effort to pull out the placenta if it is not separated. 
and watch for the signs of placental separation once if the signs of placental separation is visible you can try for the removal of the placenta and uh, if the bladder is full that you should empty by using the catheterization because if the bladder is full that may block the passage of downward passage of the placenta so it empty the bladder and if bleeding is there in the third stage you should manage that also this retained placenta you can see in three cases sometimes it may be separated and after the separation it may remain inside the uterus itself or sometimes it may not be separated that is unseparated without separation it will remain inside the uterus and sometimes it may be complicated that is may be separated or may not be separated but it may be associated with other complications and if the placenta is separated and if it is retained how to manage it means you just express the placenta out by controlled contraction and if it is an unseparated placenta you should try for the manual removal of the placenta under the general anesthesia and the complicated placenta includes complicated retained placenta includes retained placenta with hemorrhage or shock retained placenta with shock alone retained placenta with hemorrhage alone retained placenta with signs of infection retained placenta with episiotomy boot these are the complications that you can see along with the placental retention and in these cases you should take the intra uterine swab and you should send it for culture and sensitivity in order to identify the microorganism which has produced the infection and you should give prophylactic antibiotics even if infection is not there also if the placenta is retained and if bleeding is there means you should go for the blood transfusion and you should take if possible you should take measures for the manual removal of the placenta the complications include that is the complications of retain mainly the adult placenta include uh, not only the adult placenta if the placenta is remaining inside there is a chance for hemorrhage that is postpartum hemorrhage chance is there and chance for shock is there due to the blood loss and uh, there is a chance for subsequent recurrence in the subsequent pregnancies and chance for infection is there pupil sepsis in chance is there these are the complications of retain placenta now we can see another condition that is placenta accreta this is an adult placenta in this case the placenta will get of the placenta will reach up to the level of the uterine myometrium usually the placenta is getting attached to the endometrium we know that the three layers are there for the endometrium during pregnancy decidua capsularis decidua parietalis and decidua basalis so this cap um, but the decidua basalis will limit the inward growing or downward growing of the placenta and it will limit the placenta within uterine endometrium itself but here in placenta accreta what will happen means it will go beyond the level of the endometrium and it will reach up to the level of the myometrium or muscle layers of the uterus and this can be of three types that is total placenta accreta if complete placenta is adhered or attached that is known as total placenta accreta and if only a partial only few lobes are attached or few uh, certain area is involved that is known as partial placenta accreta and if only a one only one lobe or a single lobe is attached that is known as focal placenta accreta and another thing is placenta increta actually these are the different types of adherence placenta increta means this villi or the villi of the placenta will in, in grow inward beyond the level of or it will grow into the myometrium and it will anchored into the muscle bundles in the first case it will reach up to the level of the myometrium but here it will go into the myometrium so the deeper layers of the muscles it will grow into the deeper layers of the muscles of the myometrium next is placenta percreta in placenta percreta the placenta or the villus of the placenta will grow beyond the level of the myometrium and it will reach up to the serosal layer that is it will pierce the endometrium myometrium and it will reach to the serosal layer of the uterus here you can see this is placenta accreta that is it has reached up to the level of the myometrium this is placenta increta it has grown into the myometrium this is the myometrium it has inverted into the myometrium and this is the last one that is percreta it has uh, inverted the endometrium myometrium and it has reached up to the outer serosal layer of the uterus the associated conditions include 
the placenta previa that is these adherents you can see in the case of placenta previa previous history of cesarean delivery that is if the placenta is getting attached to the previous cesarean wound area that area may be weak when comparing with the other areas of the uterus so the placenta may grow deep into that uh, into the myometrium or perimetrium in through that wound area and previous history of the dilatation and curettage that is if there is any injury due to dilatation and curettage through that injured part it may grow deep into the layers and if the gravida is six or more in those cases the capacity or thickness of the uterus may be less and sometimes the muscle muscles also may be weak and the weak muscles may allow the inversion of the placenta and maternal serum alpha 40 protein level if it is more than 2.5 millimole in that cases also you can see the adherence of placenta and the diagnosis the diagnosis usually you will be diagnosing it when you are trying for the manual removal of the placenta and if you are trying for the manual removal of the placenta in the normal case you can see a cleavage between the placenta and the uterine endometrium here when you are palpating you won't be able to feel that cleavage and for the confirmation you can go for the USG and ultrasonography and even MRI also you can take in the MRI you can see the uterine bulging that is bulging of the uterine layers will be there and heterogeneous signal intensity within the placenta also you can see and the pathological confirmation include absence of decidua basalis that is the third layer of the already I have told you about the layers of endometrium during pregnancy decidua capsularis parietalis and basalis sometimes the decidua basalis may be absent or may be less in that case directly it will grow into the biometrium and absence of nitabash fibrinoid layer in that case also because of the absence of that layer it may grow into the myometrium and varying degrees of penetration of the villi into the muscle bundles and up to the serosal layers and the management in the case of focal placenta accreta that is if only one lobe is there remove the balanced placenta how much is possible how far is possible remove that much and for achieving the uterine contractions you can give oxytocin and uh, if bleeding is there means you can go for the intrauterine plugging otherwise uh, if it is a cesarean you can just switch the area um, put a stitch over the area where bleeding is there and if the uterus fail to contract and even if the bleeding persists and if the uh, birth history is completed that is if the couples they don't want more children you can go for the hysterectomy that is removal of the uterus that you can do in the case of multiparous woman and if total placenta accreta is there means usually hysterectomy is indicated it is better to do the hysterectomy if the couples they don't want children in the future but if the family history is not completed if they want more children in the future what you can do means you can just come cut the umbilical cord from the base that is how much it is possible you can cut it from there and you just leave the remaining placenta over there it will get autolyzed and it will get absorbed in due time you should give high antibiotics you can give start methotrexate in rare cases sometimes the placenta may invert into the bladder also in that cases also you should not try for the removal of the placenta you can try for the hysterectomy that is removal of the uterus and partial cystectomy also can be done and uh, in main, main cases if even after doing a hysterectomy and uh, cystectomy also partial cystectomy also you should start antibiotics methotrexate the complications include that is if adult placenta is there and if you are leaving over there that may leads to the shock hemorrhage chance for high infection is there chance for invasion of the uterus is also there and in all these cases if you are trying for the delivery future again if you are trying for a further pregnancy there is a chance for recurrence of the same condition in the future pregnancy also thank you for watching this video soon we will be meeting with another video bye